Well, welcome back. You're watching NSC Closing Bell, making that attempt for 3100 once again. Interesting dichotomy seen between uh, these two private sector guys, Tata Power and Reliance Infra, with a 4 and a 7% rally, respectively, and an NTPC that's down a fair bit in trade today. But it's the three big oil and gas guys, your Reliance, Kane, and ONGC, that are really holding up the market. Anish Srivastav, CIO at IDBI Fortis Life Insurance, now joins in to talk about trade. Anish, thanks so much for joining in. What is your sense going to 2009? DIs, like yourself, had pumped in about 70 to a thousand crores in a falling market last year right. going into these levels in 2009 how much do you sense that cash allocation would be to equities this year and what's the outlook in general uh, as far as the outlook is concerned I would like to uh, express like this that today most of the global economies are getting into recession and uh, uh, to counter this trend unprecedented uh, uh, fiscal and monetary steps are taken by uh, most of the central governments uh, and uh, as well as the central banks. Uh, historically, it has been seen that uh, fall in the interest rates leads to some kind of a recovery in real economy. Uh, so, it's very difficult to believe that when such strong actions are taken, uh, no positive signs would be reflected. My sense is that perhaps there would be some positive vibes coming in, maybe six months down the line. Uh, if you see the history of the U.S. markets uh, uh, in last 80 years, approximately we have seen 16 recessions, and uh, barring 1930 recession, uh, most of these recessions were lasting for around 13 months. Uh, some of the research agencies have suggested in in U.S. that uh, U.S. entered into recession in sometime in uh, December 2007. So considering that, my sense is that somewhere uh, in next two quarters, perhaps some kind of stability should be coming in. And then from there, we would start uh, improving. Uh, coming over to, uh, to Indian macroeconomic scenario from there, uh, 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 there, there, are, there are two key factors in India. One is that India is the net importer of commodities. And second is that India is also a net importer of capital. As far as commodity prices are concerned, as far as crude prices are concerned, they have corrected substantially. And that has benefited India. Had, had crude remained at $145, perhaps India's FI09, FI010 uh, uh, current account deficit would have been 5.5% of GDP. Uh, with these levels, perhaps it would be around 1.5% uh, uh, around, um, uh, of GDP. Similarly, India is net importer of capital. Now, globally, central banks have cut the interest rates. So, there is a very strong possibility that we would be getting in uh, low cost capital. As of now, liquidity is tight, but over a period of time, I'm sure that this scenario would also improve. So in this kind of a scenario, when perhaps macros are a little turning favorable for India, uh, I think uh, India should be doing relatively better than many of the economies. Coming specifically to the stock mm -hmm. market, my sense is that uh, there would be three phases in the stock market. First phase is when we have seen markets had gone down to 7,700 levels and then recovered, which means that there is a multiple expansion phase which is going on from say 8 times to 12 times multiple. Post this phase, there would be a second phase one, once perhaps there would be a stability of earnings happening and hence next phase of growth would be coming in which would be perhaps 6 months down the line when earnings further expansion, one, once there would be a clear visibility, then perhaps further expansion of multiples from say 12 times to 15 times. So, uh, so these are the three phases how we would see that the markets uh, moving up. As far as uh, if we divide this whole year into two parts, first part would be when perhaps there would be uh, uh, lack of visibility, a lot of bad news coming in, sure. hence perhaps markets may remain range bound. But subsequent to that, perhaps. Anish, so just to step in uh, right. from, sure, so just to step in from what we've seen up until now in January, where do you think the market is at this point? And uh, what do you expect to see for the first quarter even? Do you expect to see more strength for the market or generally consolidation at the gains we've made till now? Uh, my sense is that there would be a consolidation happening because first quarter earnings perhaps would not be so good. So in that kind of a scenario, uh, markets can move up marginally and subsequently there would be a consolidation phase between, uh, between 9,000 to 12,000 levels. Hmm. Shashank, uh, up until the end of the fiscal year, anyway, we can more or less strike out any fiscal action. How much more teeth do you think any monetary action has? Do you expect to see a lot more from that front or do you think we've probably seen the big chunk of it? I think the, uh, you know, though I think more is uh, expected out of RBI uh, in terms of, you know, repo rate cuts and uh, even CRR cuts have been expected. I think most important point here is to really look at whether, you know, commodities come back with a vengeance. Uh, see, commodities uh, have actually gone down substantially 
and uh, somewhere i think across the world uh, we are actually saying that you know because economies are in a bad shape uh, you know commodity prices may not really look up because there is not adequate demand for these commodities uh, but my sense is that i think uh, further action from rbi uh, would be linked to uh, you know what sort of change happens on the commodity front um, if oil continues to uh, go up or for that matter metals again start moving up or for that matter agri commodities start coming back uh, clearly it's not going to be uh, you know leaving too much room for rbi uh, to really uh, cut uh, you know uh, rates further uh, though again you know inflation being an optical number will still continue to go down uh, while the reality would be quite different as commodities start moving up uh, so i'm not sure whether inflation will get impacted substantially by commodity prices but psychologically definitely uh, you know it's going to have a uh you know lesser room to really act upon um so in you know so long as commodities remain low uh, great i think you know rbi will continue to do its uh, you know uh, good work what they have been doing in the last three months and we'll get more liquidity and you know clearly he- head towards lower interest rates but i think it all hinges on the commodity prices from here on Okay, let's take a break on that note. As we speak, 3100 is here for the first time today. In trade, the Nifty has gotten to that level. The Nifty gainers should come up on your screens because metals have actually, they're the ones who've driven the rally in this last one hour at any rate. Sterlite is now at the high point of the day. That's up 10%. Tata Steel, another heavyweight, has had a good session. That's up 6.5%, which is why the Nifty has managed to cross that 3100 mark. We've ten- tended to obsess with it because it's been an important trading level. So if we can close above it, that should go down as a big positive for the bulls put call ratio just inching up higher as well last half hour to go we're going to come back 3100 on the nifty